I'm Stu Miniman, joined with Brian Gracely here at 60 South Street, downtown Boston, at BMC Day. Happy to have on the program for the first time, Mati Pitkinen, who's the Senior Director of Worldwide Performance and Availability Solutions. Analytics, Analytics Performance Solutions and Marketing. Yeah, availability uh, is also very important, so it's okay. But uh, analytics. Sorry are about key. that, Maddie. So, okay. uh, you know, lots of acronyms out there. Tell us a little bit about uh, your background and, and uh, your role at BMC. Uh, okay. So, I've been with BMC. I like to say that I was raised by BMC. <laughs> In January, I will have been with BMC for 20 years. And they're a wonderful company, or I wouldn't have stayed there that long. And actually, my background is quite diverse. I started out as a techie. An Oracle DBA, if you know, there's still sure, a thing, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But back in 7016 world, we were migrating from six to seven, so long, long time ago. And uh, I started off in development, and from there, I kind of took my hand at almost everything within BMC. In the past couple of years, I decided I wanted to get out in front of customers. I wanted to interact more. I wanted to help take our message and what we were doing to the market. And I joined our solutions marketing team, and I currently lead that effort around our performance and analytics business. Okay. That was a mouthful. So, so <laughs> we, we've heard a lot today about really, uh, you know, talking about digital transformations yes. and the transformation that's gone on with, with BMC. Yes. So, since the company went private, you know, how, how should we be thinking about BMC? Uh, what, 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 what's the positioning that you know? <laughs> when, when do we think about BMC? Well, see, so, okay, so that's the thing. One thing I can do probably better than most people here yeah. is talk about the transformation that BMC has gone through. So BMC has definitely had some major ups and major downs over the 20 years. And, and most recently, so people have asked me that, it's a common question. Um, I can think of some really high points early in you know, 2004, 2005, in 90s. And then we've had some rough points, but the acquisition was by far one of the best things that could have happened to BMC. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm a storyteller. So there I hope go. that's okay. That's great. Um, I'm not formal, which is probably why I'm better in marketing than maybe I was in the engineering role. Uh, I was at an airport <clears throat> in London. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was catching a flight to Stockholm. And I was just chit-chatting, I was just making friends, right? So you're talking to the guy in front of me and um, he, he says, oh, you're with BMC. It was about a year and a half ago. You're with BMC. And he was with, I, I want to say he was with Cisco or he was with, he was one of the, the big companies. And I said, yeah, it's a great company. He looked at me and he went, you know, it's kind of scary. Aren't they just taking the company and pulling it apart and selling it for pieces? And I looked at him and I went, no. And I said, but if I'm going to be honest, I think that crossed everybody's mind. What really they've done by going private is, is they invested in all of a sudden areas where we wanted to develop and get creative and do some things outside the box. I mean, you think about it, it's a risk. And when you have all these shareholders to worry about, it's a lot harder to take that risk, especially because everything requires funding. And I said, it's, what they've done is they've taken tons of money and they've poured it into my group and in other groups at BMC. And all of a sudden we're, we're developing and we're innovating and, and it's actually a very, very exciting time. So what I can say is, is those words are probably even more true now. And what we're starting to see are some of the, the fruits of that labor. We're starting to come to market. Um, we made a recent acquisition with TrueSight Pulse, mm -hmm. and we took that to market in September timeframe. And we're, that's venturing us into the DevOps space, and it's exciting what we're about to do. In fact, we just announced uh, support for Docker. Mm -hmm. So we're getting into the containerization world, and we're helping our IT constituents and our, and our customers be able to support technology like that. And then, of course, TrueSight Intelligence. And that's coming out at the start of the calendar year. Um, we'll really make a big push probably around end of first quarter, second quarter. And what that's doing is that's taking IT and what's become so critical to IT and allowing them to have that connection to the business and become in an essence more intelligent about how they run their internal operations. Yeah, so you, you know, you talked about storytelling. Um, yes. Everything today was, was <coughs> kind of, you know, we're at the beginning of this next big transformation, right? Yes. People, and, and for a lot of companies, Internally, they have to, to tell stories. I mean, how am I going to get from here to who I'm competing against? How am I going to, as a, as a marketer, especially around pri your private company now, which mm -hmm. is different than being a public company, what changes from how you try and explain what BMC does and then maybe help uh, your customers tell their mm -hmm. internal stories? Does it change a lot as a private company versus a public company, or do you have more freedoms to, to talk about things? Well, I mean, I think we still have to follow the same rules sure. as everybody else. So there's you know, certain limitations still on what we can share and what we can't share. Um, as far as storytelling, 
what I would say is, is the journey is a different one. So it is very different in the sense of, I think in the past we were very bound with, um, these are our solutions, we knew what brought in money, right? And you look at traditional IT and where it stood, and, and we've been supporting traditional IT for, was it 30 something years? I don't know the exact amount of time. But now we're getting into spaces that maybe we weren't in before, and I think what we're able to do is actually talk to innovations, talk to new areas, new disciplines. DevOps is one I brought up, containerization is another. And what I'm allowed to do now, I probably would have been allowed to, technically allowed to do it before, but maybe I wouldn't have because the belief, the truth wasn't there. But I can talk about these things even if we don't necessarily support them yet. So it's, it's this ability to, to not just craft a vision, everybody has to craft a vision, but it's, it's a real vision. And it's, it's this notion of, hey, you know, um, and, and I know I brought Docker up, but it's in my mind right now. But Docker, I mean, in the past, we, we might have talked about internally Docker, and we knew it was there, but we didn't necessarily have support, so it became something you become fearful of. Yeah. But now we have these, this freedom. I don't know <clears> if it's the culture, it's the vibe, but it, you know, maybe we didn't have it yet, but we knew we were going to work towards it. We knew it was important, and I could talk about it. Yeah. I, it's not, I wasn't saying anything wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, Monty, I'm curious. You, you bring up Docker and you know, we, yes. we, we really hot topic. <laughs> We've been at DockerCon. Uh, okay. How much of that is your customers kind of coming to you and saying, you know, where are they? Where are your customers? How mm -hmm. much of it is a push versus a pull? Uh, you know, wh how, do, how, how does it come up in the conversation? So customers are definitely talking to us yeah. about it, right? But I think one thing that's, that's different, so customers will always help us and guide us with our solutions. Um, but we also recognize that IT in itself is changing. And so maybe the things that our traditional customers were doing, they want to venture out and they're not used to coming to BMC for it. So if we look at, at Docker, I think our customers are venturing there, but not necessarily have come to us and said, hey, BMC, we need support. What we're able to do now is recognize the trends that are in the market and start to take action. And so what we've discovered, I mean, Docker, obviously, it's a natural thing to do. It's important, it's critical. It's, I think we're going to see a lot more of it, right? But what we're able to do is, is go out and provide that support, and we're having conversations with customers who are like, wow, we were just talking about having to, to run support, and I had no idea what I was going to do. And they were looking, but they weren't thinking necessarily BMC, and now they, start, they are starting to. They're starting to get that, hey, we're not um, one of the, what did somebody describe us as? One of the big stodgy, you know, we're yeah. actually not. We're kind of, we're not kind of. We're, we're pretty cool now. Yeah. 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 So, so w w one one of the themes that's been discussed mm -hmm. a lot is how fast things are changing. Uh -huh. When I think about solutions marketing, building that pipeline of solutions, you know, mm -hmm. it, there there's a process that's involved, and yeah. usually you come up with the idea, you create it, you push it yeah. out, you go to market, you get traction. Yeah. How, how does that rate of change affect what's happening in solutions marketing? Well, I mean, even marketing, if you look at it, it's got to be agile, hmm. right? And uh, you know, one of the things that's interesting is if you look at software companies and, and IT companies, there's a big push to selling towards marketing. And, and I think it's because marketing has become very analytical. Um, you don't just go and create a, a flyer and mail it out anymore. Right, nobody gets that yeah. kind of stuff anymore. It's all digital, it's all on your laptop. I mean, look at what we're doing here today, right? This is very, very different than what we would have done in the past. So we have to change, marketing has to change as rapidly as well. Um, you can't take eight weeks to build a white paper. You need to understand what the customer is thinking, and you almost need to, in some ways, not just as a second guess, but predict, right? Predict the trends and start to act on them and start to figure it out. So what we do, we tie very closely with product management. So in the marketing realm, we're working with them and their vision, but in many ways, we're also seeing firsthand the vision of our customers. And we're having to tie the two, and then we're quickly having to change the way that we're taking the message forward. Does that make sense? Yep. So you're talking about Docker, you're talking yep. about some of these cool open source yes. types of the unicorn stuff. You know, if I go to you know an O'Reilly event or something, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's all open source. It's open yes. source tools, it's open source. But you know, we talked. You know, the keynotes today was how do I link the new systems of engagement, which mm -hmm. is the new cool stuff, with systems of record. And mm -hmm. how much do you guys have to get more into being around those communities and make people mm -hmm. understand that yes, you might be doing stuff with Docker or something you know new and cool, yeah. but you've got to link back to those those other systems that have that data. And BMC, you know, may start having those those interconnection points more and more. How do yeah. you, how do you get into those communities? <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Let, let me tell you. Um, 
because we're not we're we're not traditionally thought that way but it is important to maintain our link back to where we were so if you look at industrial IT um, and and it sounds like a nasty term and I don't think it is I think it's actually important because even even the cool hot you know DevOps IT centers need to deliver a certain level of performance and availability that assurance has to be there and, and that really came from industrialized IT, this ability, quick time to resolution, et cetera. So we live there, we're, we're helping them make sure they can support the technology, but we are venturing out open source, you brought that up. We need people to understand that we're not the BMC back then. You guys, are you familiar with BSM? Mm -hmm. Okay, so BMC, when we launched the BSM business service management message and we took that to market, it, it was a, in many ways ahead of its time. <clears throat> with this integration of all the components and the shared messaging. But one of the things that I think at the time we were trying to do was convince everyone that, hey, if you get BMC across the board, right, then you integrate everything and it's nirvana. Right. One big thing that has shifted within BMC, and I can speak to performance analytics, I think I can speak across BMC overall, is we're, we get it it's not going to all be BMC. Even if I look in the monitoring space, a typical company has, what, 30, 50 different monitoring tools that have just been pulled in and brought in. We have to think broad, broader. We have to take BSM. It's a great idea. You want everything integrated, but it can't be all BMC. And so we've opened our arms, and we take <clears throat> integrations, and we work with solutions, even some that our competitors are taking to market, and we have to. And I think that you'll continue to see that change. Right. And then open source, we've always used open source technology, so that's nothing new. But what I think you're going to start to see from BMC is us really giving back. Hmm. And we're starting to work on, you know, what, if you look at our intelligence solution, we have a lot of open source technology in that and it's coming to market. What can we take and we're working on, what do we take and give back to the open source community? And that's something we've never done before. So it will take time. Yeah, but a lot of big changes coming. It will, yeah, but I think it's necessary. Excellent. All right, Excellent. well, Mari, I think that's a great place to end the uh, conversation here. Uh, thanks for sharing with us everything on performance and availability. Uh, analytics. analytics. <laughs> Anal well, well, you could say uh, it, uh, it's on, okay. You know, you know what? In the keynote, it said that uh, Bill Bills was uh, performance and, 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 and availability. Ah, oh, analytics. You're fine. Uh, I just, thanks so much. I actually think it's just important, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, performance right. and analytics. Absolutely, uh, hu hugely important in what's yeah. going on. Uh, We'll be back with more coverage from BMC Day. Thanks okay. for watching.